habt. Oh my, if he plays this, that's gonna be that's gonna be a shocker to Grishuk because he went for this line to create this mm -hmm. very strong rook on the seventh. We all know how powerful a rook can be on the seventh, but if if he can <gasps> plays those, he those play three 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 no, this guy has an engine in his brain and it's official. <laughs> Yesterday, this beautiful tactic that he saw, 10 moves ahead, now bishop c6. And you know, there was a drop, it's just not like one move. He made this drop, I think from 97, because white's next moves are so obvious here. Knight takes here. And look at this one, bishop c6. This actually forces white to take the knight, right? And you've bishop... got to take it. And after bishop b6, it's not like the rook is going to be trapped immediately, but the idea is to push a5 and then king f8 is a big threat. Wow. wow. What a shock. Rushuk has Whoa. only six according to our clocks. Um, this, this might not be the move you want to see right now if you are a Grishuk. Absolutely not. And uh, I, I see that um, some of you are pointing out, oh, but it's obvious that the rook can be trapped on the seventh. It's mm -hmm. obvious once the engine points out and we have put it on the board, but you need to think that from the starting position, black is down a pawn. Your first thought usually is to try to win the material back. Your second thought, or even before uh, thinking about the pawn, can I win that bishop on d2? So there were so many other things he had to consider. It's not just that, oh yeah, now the rook is in trouble. There was a lot going on. And then you need to come to the conclusion that I have the time to make these two tiny bishop moves mm -hmm. and white can't do much about me pushing the pawn to a5 and playing king of eight. Yeah, it's a very slow plan, but it works.